Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Growing This Home. Um, today I wanted to talk about prayer routines, um, what mine looked like, what it started out as, um, especially if you are a convert coming into the church, it is definitely something new um, because we've always just prayed however we wanted to and now we're supposed to have this routine. Um, so I just kind of wanted to jump into that and show you guys a little bit more. Too many days in the darkness Without a glimpse of the light Running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive Okay, so if you are a new convert, this video is definitely going to help explain some things. Um, I'm really excited to share just because when I first came into the church, I was like, what are all these rules? Now we have like a routine for prayer. Um, and I was kind of like, eh, I think I like just praying whatever's on my heart. Um, but it is not that at all. Um, prayer routines can be robust. They can be very simple. Um, and I like to think of them more as like a guideline and something to help. So Father Evan, my priest, whenever I first converted and we actually, I think this happened maybe like right before our baptism. Cause really like as soon as I was like, okay with the Orthodox church, then everything happened really quickly. Um, but he just was like, okay, you're going to read like, let's start in Mark. You're going to start in Mark going to read one chapter every night and then you're going to say um the lord's prayer and you're going to say this i don't remember exactly what it was but it was like really just a few minutes that was it and he's like just try to do this every night that's all um and what i quickly learned is that there was a lot of freedom that came from not having to figure it all out of course there is like you can definitely pray spontaneous it's not taking away spontaneous prayer whatsoever um but this on the days when you're like i don't know what to pray for this helps and i feel like it really just sets your heart right and so like i actually prefer actually praying in the morning now because i have a lot of morning prayers that i can say over my kids over school over the day over whatever um like if we're going to be traveling there's just so many more prayers that i feel like kind of set the mood for the day. And I noticed that like, if I don't pray in the morning, um, then my day is kind of like whoop, craziness. So I just wanted to share really quick some of the resources and then we'll dive into um, how I use them and what my routine currently looks like. Um, so my favorite book, it was like one of the first purchases I did as soon as I became Orthodox. It might've even been a gift maybe. Um, it's been so long now, but this book, I always recommend it to everybody. Um, it is my favorite prayer book. So if you are a mom or hoping to be a mom, um, I highly recommend this book. It has prayers for children, godchildren, stepchildren, um, prayers for miscarriage and stillborn. And there's prayers for morning and night and guardian angels and like literally you name it it's in here it's amazing it is like my toolkit that i carry around um this is also something like whenever i'm struggling with anxiety there's prayers for anxiety depression all sorts of everything that you can imagine anger it's in here and it's just nice because like there's also scripture to back it up this book is a must-have i will link it below um if you don't have it go buy it. It will be like probably one of the best purchases you make. 
Okay, this one, this next book I'm gonna share with you is a little bit more recent. Um, Sylvia is a great friend of mine. Um, we met via Instagram, we've never met in person, but I love her. She's like a dear friend to me now. Um, and she just creates some of the most beautiful content, especially for Orthodox moms, for Orthodox women. She's so inspiring. If you do not follow her, you should go follow her. I'll also tag her Instagram and she just started vlogging this year, which is super exciting. I think her vlogging account is Cultivating Home. If I said that wrong, I'm so sorry, Sylvia. Um, anyway, back to this. She created this beautiful prayer companion book. Um, this hasn't left my side. So like these two now I use together every single day. Um, and how this one differs from this prayer book, this is like all prayers. There's no worksheets or anything in this. This is literally like just prayers. Um, and while there are some prayers in here, um, under through the prayers. So there's like a whole section that says through the prayers. And then there's just like a few pages of different prayers. There's not a lot, but there's some really pretty prayers in here. Like that are not in this book. So this is one whole prayer for morning. So um, you can kind of pick and choose. I have some days when I'm like, I don't really feel like reading this prayer today. Then I maybe open up this one. So um, also she has this little thing in the back, which I just, it popped open. So I wanted to show you really quick. Um, but for like all of these different things, it's hard to see. Like for mental health, it tells you which saints there you go to look up and read their story um and ask for intercessory prayer for um there's also a section in here for gratitude um setting goals all this this is kind of like another toolkit that you can just carry around with you um i will link this also below where the book is going to be linked that way it's easy to find okay the next thing I'm going to talk about is my gratitude journal. This was recommended by Father Evan. Um, so this is something new to me, but I'm really loving it. It's just perfect. Um, so this is the gratitude book or journal for, of Thanksgiving. So recording three years of gratitude in a sentence a day. Um, and it's just really beautifully written. So you can see like it has multiple spaces for you. For the three years just so you guys can see it a little bit more close up so that you have this whole section and then this would be year two and year three so this was only a few dollars off of amazon it wasn't that much um i highly recommend you get this all right another thing i since converting to orthodoxy have struggled with reading my bible just because i'm kind of like I don't know what to believe. I don't know if this lines up with orthodoxy. Um, you know, all the things. I just question everything and I don't trust myself enough to not like fall for something that maybe was said incorrectly. So that was something that like when we converted, we had to kind of relearn some of the things of like, oh, you know, this scripture verse, this is actually what it meant and this is what it was talking about. And not that it we had been taught wrong, it's just that we didn't have the fullness of what it actually meant. Um, and so that was like, ooh, I've been saying this wrong this whole time. Anyway, Orthodox Study Bible. Um, this is wonderful. This is actually the newer one, so um, you can get them off of Ancient Faith. They have an older one. Um, this is the new style. They also have a leather bound, which is really beautiful. Um, that one's going to run like $75 and I think these are like in the range of 30 so 35 I think is maybe what they are. Um, but what's so beautiful about this, also it has the book of Maccabees in here, it's funny that I ended up turning to it, um, but you can see at the bottom where it kind of just explains a little bit more. So you know if you have a question about something or you don't understand it or maybe there's they have to like back it up with saying like and this is why they're going to throw it in the bottom so as you're reading you kind of just learn and absorb so much more than i feel like if you just had a regular um, new king james version bible okay and then the last thing i'm going to share with you guys 
Another thing from Sylvia, guys, seriously, I told you I love her. Um, but she created this beautiful Psalter. It's called Song of Praise. Yes, I almost said that Song of Psalter. And I was like, no, sorry. Oh, and here's her picture. So you guys can see her. Um, anyway, I love this. Reading the Psalms daily, especially like during feast day. So you can do like this really fun thing um, where you do like a whole Psalter group. Um, with a bunch of women. It's really awesome. Um, anyway, why I love this book is because then she throws in, so after each cathisma, she's going to throw in something. This one is Seek Him in the Wilderness, and she just shows, like, tells you about a personal story, and then you get, like, a little thing from a saint, a little quote, and then you have some journaling pages. So, some of these I've journaled on, some of them not. Um, it really just depends on how I'm feeling that day. But I highly recommend getting this Psalter. Um, it makes it so easy to read the Psalms. And you like reading them in the Cathisma. Also, I feel like just, I don't know, having them together in a group, obviously, they just, it feels so good. Okay, that was a lot. Um, but now I'm going to jump into... Um, what my routine looks like. Um, and then I would recommend as always talk to your priest. Don't do anything on your own. Um, and guys, if something is too hard or maybe not hard enough, go talk to your priest. I have literally told father Evan, like, I can't do this. I just, sorry. Like, I know that this seems so simple, like read this scripture every single day and read this really easy prayer. And I'm like, yeah, I haven't read that in three months, so I think it's time for a new routine. <laughs> um, and Father Evan is so gracious and so loving towards me, which I'm very thankful for. Um, so anyway, I recommend every single day starting off the day with reading um, just one chapter of either the Psalms or like reading one Psalm or reading a chapter from the New Testament. Um, and you can just work your way slowly through each of the books. So then also, if you do not have your icon corner set up, that will be on another vlog of how I set mine up. Um, I have two different ones and because we're moving, I, that's kind of why I haven't shown you one of my icon corners is incomplete, but if you have any questions about icon corners, um, you can either shoot me a message below, add a comment below, I'd be happy to answer. So in front of your icon wall, um, or in front of the icons, standing is how I prefer to pray. Um, but there are definitely days when I'm just on my knees or, you know, sitting in bed. It really just depends, but I try to do this every single day. Um, so from the aesthetic lives of mothers book. Um, if you pop it open to the morning prayers, I read the Trisagion prayers, the Creed, and then Prayer of Metropolitan Philaret. Um, and then sometimes, not every single day, I will read the before the school prayers. Um, so not every day I'm terrible at reading it, but I love reading about early reading the God children prayer. So there's a whole section on that. Um, and then I always read a prayer over my children and a prayer um, for my marriage. And then sometimes I pray over the kids, future spouses, if that is where God leads them. Um, so all in total, that probably takes me at most 20 minutes. Um, throughout the day, if I am struggling with anxiety or anger, then I just pop this open and read a quick prayer. Um, if someone has died, then I read the prayers for 40 days. Um, if God has placed that on my heart. So I don't always do that. But for me, this is just something like a while back, there was a little baby that I just followed on Instagram. I followed her story um, that her mom was sharing. She was diagnosed with a really rare form of brain cancer at four months old um, and she died right just before her first birthday and her death really impacted me um, a lot like it just it 
it was sad it hurt um I don't feel that way about like every single story on the internet because I know that there's so much but that one in particular really just touched me um and so we got a picture of her and slapped it up on my icon wall and every single day for 40 days I prayed um the prayers over her so that is what my routine oh hand this book don't forget this one so then in this one under the through the prayers like I said sometimes um if I need to just step away from the other prayers then I'll read the prayers for daybreak um this one is by Saint Sophroni of Essex um, and then also if I'm having like really a hard time that day with mental health, um, then I read this one. The prayer for mental well-being. Um, and then the both books I have with tons of prayers, but this one is also a great prayer if you're trying to conceive a child. Um, you can get some oil some holy oil and you know just rub it across your stomach and pray every single day um which is something that i'm currently doing because we are trying to conceive baby number four um i also have some saint anna oil um so i do use that um, i'm going to be taking it to church with me and getting a blessing from father evan with it um and then i also have some oil from saint john of san francisco um, and that's just another holy oil that you can use. Um, in our apartment, we obviously are not burning incense, which has been super sad. So um, I just use my frankincense oil, um, essential oil that I have and rub it all over. And every time I apply frankincense, it's like I'm in church. I like feel like my prayers, you know, the whole point of incense with frankincense. Um, so yeah, the oil kind of just does the same thing. Um, once we're back into a house, um, hopefully this summer, then we'll start burning incense again. Um, I have some frankincense that I ordered from a monastery. I'll link that below. Um, so if any of you guys have any questions, drop them below. I'd be happy to answer. If you guys have your own prayer books that you'd recommend, drop them below because I really want to know what they are. Um, and as always, I hope you guys have a really blessed day, have a wonderful time, and I will talk to you next time.